We've all heard the adage, content is king, but is it? When I started podcasting back in 2006, almost 17 years ago at the time of this recording, content had to be king because my quality certainly was not. Back in 2006, I ran to Radio Shack. Yes, that was still a thing. And if you're young, you're going to have to Google that. And I bought a microphone. It was the aptly named Radio Shack 33-3036. I raced home and off we went. Also in 2006, I used to bring in guests via a speaker telephone. Yes, I'd aim a microphone at the speaker in order to bring in a guest. So that's why I say I can assure you that quality was not job one back in those days. But let's fast forward to today. Nowadays, just about every podcaster has more equipment than they know what to do with. We spend hundreds and sometimes thousands of dollars on gear just to eke out just a little bit more quality. And possibly we've become so gear obsessed that we've reached the law of diminishing returns. Sometimes there's not that much difference from a $700 interface and a $150 interface, especially if your audience member is listening to you on cheap earbuds or while they're driving in the car. I will caution you that content can't be king unless you reach a minimum quality threshold. So a level in which most people would agree that your audio is not the issue. And today, that's pretty easy to achieve in an upcoming video. I'm challenging a YouTube rival to put together a sub $100 pre-tax, of course, microphone and audio interface. And we'll see how that pans out. Your audience has an expectation on what they believe to be quality audio. This is a sliding scale, of course. Everybody has their own nitpicks on audio. But what I try to get people to focus on is presentation. Even on a bad microphone, good presentation and Slick editing can make you sound a lot more effective. And I think sometimes people put more emphasis on the gear than they do on polishing and honing their craft, eliminating dead air and trying to eliminate crutch words and having just a really good pace to your podcast can work wonders and make people forget about standard or substandard quality. However, I think we need to put that to the test. While looking for another item the other day, I stumbled across an old favorite, that good old trusty microphone from 2006. I was afraid to plug it into my Rodecaster Pro, so instead I plugged it into the Behringer UM2, which even by today's standards is much better than what I used back in those old days. Still by today's standards, probably not the top of the line audio interface. So it should help us simulate what I would sound like from 2006 today. Right now, the Shure SM7B going into the Rodecaster Pro 2. Now I'm gonna switch over to the Behringer UM2 and the Radio Shack 33-3036. I got that right. All right, now I'm on the Radio Shack microphone. <laughs> And I can tell that it sounds um, much different than what I was just on. Let me ask you this. If the content were good enough, could you sit through a 30 to 60 minute podcast with audio quality that sounds like this? If the guest or the host had an excellent setup and <laughs> I came on with this sound quality, would you immediately turn the podcast off? I want you to chime in in the comments down below with your honest thoughts on if you could endure a podcast with this audio quality. Obviously, I couldn't find this mic anywhere but secondhand shops, and it was being sold from anywhere from $20 to as much as $43. I wouldn't pay $10 for this microphone. In a recent video I did, I reviewed the cheapest microphone I found on Amazon, which was another handheld microphone XLR and it was about $15 and I think it sounds light years better than this. In fact, let's put that to the test. Back on the $15 microphone, the Waymic 
WM58. Here's how it sounds in comparison. To me, this sounds much fuller, richer than the Radio Shack microphone, but it's a much newer microphone, so it's probably to be expected. Now back on the Radio Shack mic, how does it sound in comparison to the Waymic WM58? Okay, I can't take this anymore. I'm heading back to the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Shure SM7B. Back on the Rodecaster Pro 2 with the Shure SM7B, what I want to say is, in 2006, what if I had said, let me wait until I have excellent audio quality before I start? I would have ended up waiting until uh, late 2008, early 2009. That's three years worth of audience building that wouldn't have happened. Now, granted, back then, the bar for audio quality was a lot lower than it is today. But with solid content, good communication, and inviting my audience to communicate with me, I was able to build a great community, many of whom I still have today. Almost 17 years later, and it's many of the same faces and a whole bunch of new additions, which is humbling. I think content is king once you hit a certain threshold of audio quality. And today, it's easier than ever to meet that threshold. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are there certain podcasts that you've just tuned out because the audio quality is so bad? And if so, what specifically about the audio quality was it? Chime in in the comments down below. Pattern Large Diaphragm Tube. I'll see him soon enough. Thank you.